Hey, how about you, everybody? Welcome into this week's edition of the Auburn Live Recruiting Show. I'm your host, Jeffrey Lee, Senior Recruiting Editor for Auburn Live on 3. Today is Wednesday, April 12th, 2023. Keep that in mind moving forward as we will probably uh, refer to today, tomorrow, and yesterday quite often. Today is Wednesday. I'm joined, as I always am, by Mr. Cole Pinkston, Mr. J. Head. How about you, fellas? How about you? Hey, how about you? <laughs> hey, before we get started, and we have a lot to talk about today, but before we get started, um, I know there are a couple of people going on road trips, needed a new car, needed a used car. I was like, dude, I got you right here, man. Caleb Schofield with Mike Patton Auto in LaGrange, Georgia, folks. He can do it all. He can find you what you want, have it delivered to your house. Good Auburn man. Give him a call, 334-531-0996. He's got new Ford, Lincoln, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, Ram, and Hondas. And the used car lot is huge. And those used cars have to pass a multi-point inspection before they even put them on the lot. And then they back those used cars with free three-month, 3,000-mile warranty. The new cars come even more guaranteed with a free lifetime powertrain warranty, unlimited time, unlimited mileage. And if you're not in the market for a car but you know somebody who is, send them to Caleb. He'll send you $300. Not a bad deal. Actually, it's a pretty damn good deal. Caleb Schofield, folks. Mike Patton Auto in LaGrange, Georgia. 334-531-0996. Woo! All right, <laughs> folks. A day is over. Spring practices have – is it commenced? Or that's when you start, right? They've concluded. That's what I said. <laughs> um, and uh, we are a, a man down this week. And uh, good reason for that. Mr. Keith Niebuhr, uh, who's been with us for quite a few months now, has uh, Year taken, on, taken on a new role with the network. Will not be uh, with, with Auburn Live anymore. Will not be covering Auburn Live. But man, we sure we sure will certainly miss him. But we're proud for him, man. He's got a uh, an exciting new gig ahead for him. We'll all be finding out what that is soon. But uh, Keith's been with the uh, covering Auburn for I think at least ten years now, mostly with twenty four seven over at Auburn Undercover. Came over with us, and uh, we've loved. Almost every minute of it. <laughs> I tell you what, folks, you all see how this man works. True. 24 7, and I'm not joking. And mm. was, I want to take an opportunity just to say a special thanks to Keith for everything, giving me the opportunity to kind of watch as he goes about his business, how he handles things, how he processes things, and in kind of a true introduction uh, into this business to a degree. And, and not nearly as much as it is with Cole, obviously, but just a special thanks to Keith for everything. Going to miss you, big dog. I'm looking forward to see where, you know, obviously you've entered the transfer portal. We'll see where you pop up. But uh, I'm, I'm excited for you and your family and, and wish you nothing but the best. I was, I was so glad to get to work with him so I could see behind the scenes of why he's so good, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, and great day in the morning. Dude, hey. you pulled the curtain back over this guy. And, and sometimes I didn't want to see it. No. <laughs> It's like close that curtain, man. I'm good, dude. <laughs> it makes sense though, doesn't it? Yes. It yes. When you've got a V8 humming down the freaking highway and you open that hood, you see Keith Niebuhr under there. <laughs> dude. 100 miles an hour, brother. He is. He's good. He's real good. I'm uh fantastic, uh, fantastic fella, friend of yeah, mine. I, I, I want to say too, Jeffrey, man. He, I mean, you and Justin have helped me to this point. I, I mean, I've been y'all's protege. Keith came in and did the exact same thing, took me under his wing. Kind of like, uh, you know, if you've ever seen the show Scrubs, Dr. Cox and JD, I'm, I'm JD, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but, man, I, gosh, he's, he's, he's helped me along a lot, guys. Me too. He really has. Me too. So, I will forever be indebted to him for that. And I, I appreciate the friendship too, man. We've we gotten close over, over all this, so – Gonna miss him. Real, real good dude, man. We'll uh, course, probably haven't seen be, the last of him. He won't be far. He won't be yeah. far. He'll still be probably around. Haven't, probably haven't seen the last of him, but uh, real proud for him, man. Real glad for, to uh, he, he'll be having a new assignment, something that he's been looking forward to for a long, long time. All right, Keith, enough of you, big dog. Um, <laughs> I know he's listening. He better be listening. <laughs> hey, folks, Auburn finished up a day on Saturday with uh, maybe an hour and a half. I don't know what it was, workout in the rain. They played in the rain for a little bit. And it was not very useful to the fans. I don't know if it was useful to the coaches. But it certainly was useful for the recruits. Yes. Yes. 
I was surprised as many people. I knew there were going to be some cancellations, and there were. There were some kids that were supposed to be there or expected to be there that didn't make the trip, understandable. Uh, but the kids that did, there were several of them there. I mean, big-time recruits. And didn't get a commitment, not yet. We expect we expect one or two to filter out here in the next few days, maybe a week. But, Cole, you were down there from the beginning to the end. Man, what did you take away from that? Well, I, I, th- I think I said this earlier on maybe a radio show or on the corner. Uh, familiar faces. Hmm. That, that's what I take away from it. These are guys that I'm not seeing for the first time. I've seen them several times yeah. in the month of March. And I hate to, I. I hate to keep going back to the last step, but, but honestly, I mean, that's how long I've been in this business. That's well, what, that's what you have to compare. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, that's fine. I, th- I think the that's fair. Mark, I, I probably put, Oh, I don't know, you know, 500 miles on my truck. Well, Ooh. this March I, I, I put 10,000. Okay. At least Damn. Just going back and forth to Auburn. And, and I'm not just talking about distance. I mean, that's how often I needed to be there to be able to talk to guys that were on campus and, Okay, you know, maybe a 2025 20, guy's there one day. I'll, I'll call him, catch him later. But, no, there's important guys there every single day, a random Tuesday in March. You better be on your toes because they're going to be there. And the same guys that we were seeing walk through the door in March were the same guys walking through the door in the Tiger Lounge Recruiting Center underneath the stadium at A-Day. Mm-hmm. So, to me, it was the familiar faces. It was the guys that we've seen and the guys that you want to keep seeing coming to Auburn. And they were there. Yes, you missed out on a couple guys, probably because of weather and because of other things, but they'll be back too. That's a good sign that the guys that you want to be there are going to keep coming back, and and there's no way to have a chance with them unless they're still walking through that door. I, I think Jay Head, uh, first of all, some names off the top of my hand, had uh, Cam Coleman. Y'all help me throw some names out there. Perry Thompson. Yeah, Sterling Kevin Dixon. Kevin Sterling Dixon. Kevin Riley. <laughs> Kevin Riley. <laughs> Sterling, Sterling Dixon. Sterling Dixon. Kevin Riley. Cam Justin Coleman. Green. Justin, Justin Green. Green. That's a big one. KJ Bolden. Yes, yeah. very big. Walker White. Walker White. Uh, All the commitments, I think. Walker two White. Reports. Who are the, the two kids? Courtney from? Crutchfield. And Charleston, Charlie Collins. Collins. Oh, yes. Charlie. Well, Charlie. Charlie was there. Um, how about the uh, Isaiah Autry? Offensive yep. tackle yes. from Mississippi. And dropped a top five after A Day mm-hmm. that included Auburn, uh, both the Mississippi schools and then two other high profile universities, if I remember correctly. Yeah, Ale- I think Alabama. Alabama was in there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, Alabama, and, Alabama and Tennessee, Alabama and Georgia. Let's see, hold on. Who was the other? There was Jeremiah other? Beeman. Jeremiah oh, Beeman. Jeremiah oh, Beeman was, was there. How about the, uh, then, of course, Tevis Metcalf was there. Not a yep. highly ranked kid, but man, all, all, Auburn thinks highly of him. That's for sure. DJ Barber. DJ Barber. Thank you. D'Angelo. Yeah. D'Angelo. And listen, folks, if y'all weren't in Auburn, it was, it started raining about 10 o'clock that morning, I think, because that's when about, about the time I got inside at the arena. It started raining at 10 a.m. That about right, Cole. You got outside. No, you were, it was mm. raining where you were. It wasn't raining where I was. It didn't stop. It didn't start raining until I got there at nine thirty when I had to make the long walk, and then it started pouring. Of <laughs> For the walk, yeah, I and had a number. Didn't stop. You, you called me. You a didn't have an umbrella. Yeah. When, when you sent me that text, you said, "Are you rookie? You, you don't have an umbrella." <laughs> I said, "You know what? I think my wife left an umbrella in my truck, and she dang sure did. It was Mickey Mouse." You're welcome. Yeah. You're welcome. So, so yeah, I, yeah. I reminded you. You turned around and went, yes. So, of the list, Isaiah Autry came out. Uh, Jay had in the back says Florida State, Bama, Oklahoma, Ole Miss, Auburn. Uh, Jeremiah Oklahoma. Beeman, after a visit to Auburn, came out with the top ten. I don't get excited about top tens. No. Uh, Tevis Metcalf had already listed a top four, and then of course D'Angelo Barber. We had him on commitment watch, and to be honest with you, I'm going to have him on commitment watch until he freaking commits, yeah. but. Tuesday night or Tuesday afternoon, he puts out on Instagram, you know, announcement coming April 12 days and five hours or whatever. And I'm thinking, well, that's got I me, mean, you know, that's we've been waiting on this. Mm-hmm. And then he's like, oh, no, sir, I'm not ready for a commitment. It's top eight. <laughs> I was like, all right, dude. <laughs> Appreciate you, big dog. So, uh, 
Still look. Oh, Martavius Collins was there. Yes, can't forget him. Can't forget him. Mar- we had we had two guys. I mean, we had a couple more than that. When I say we, I think we all collectively put our heads together last week's show and came up with a commit watch list. Mm-hmm. D'Angelo Barber was on there. Martavius Collins was on there. I think Bryce Kane. Uh, what's his name? Bryce Kane. Oh, yes. Yeah. Just in, he, he could be a guy that popped out of instinctively. Yeah, and because elsewhere. Um, in the, I guess, in the interwebs, Bryce Kane listed a top two of Auburn and Ole Miss after the oh. eight day game, leaning Auburn. Okay. So, yeah. So we weren't too far off. He was one of those in state kids that got an offer a week before a day. He comes, he gets blown, blown away. We've seen it before, and he commits. He was a three star kid. He probably won't end up being a three star kid because Jay Head and Cole know a lot more about it than uh, a lot of those folks, and they think very highly of this kid. Thanks so much that uh, they've got him ahead of Mario Craver. Cole, would you go that far? I know Jay had does. He uh, Similar kind of player, I, I think, uh, you know, with size and stuff, they're, they're similar in that way. But I think I think Bryce uh, – is that right, Bryce Kane? Yes. I think he's maybe a little bit more of a playmaker right now. Mm-hmm. That's, I'd give him the nod on that. I think maybe Craver's a better route runner, more polished yep. as a receiver before the ball arrives. But I like Kane with the ball in his hands. Okay. I like that. That's good stuff right there. Um, when we're talking commitment, uh, D'Angelo's not going to commit anytime soon. At least that's what he says. Uh, Martavius Collins was another kid on our commitment list, our commitment watch list. He left. He finally did say Auburn was his leader. Auburn is his leader. Mm-hmm. And he didn't – I think he put a timeline on it for later in the summer, maybe or even in the fall. I don't think either uh, – any of us uh, think it's going to go that long. I think if all of us were to put our heads together and say, who's going to be Auburn's next commitment, we would all agree. Yeah. Martavius Collins. 100%. Yep. yep. Absolutely. And he's one of those guys that we talk about. You really uh, – it's, it's such a shame some of y'all don't get to be there for the interview because – you can see it when they're talking about it and you can feel it. And he's, you know, we asked him, you know, well, how, how'd it go, man? He's like, I don't know. It was good, man. It was good. You know, he's got that smile on his face. So I, I, I you just, you feel like he's getting close. You feel like he's getting close. Another name just popped up. Oh, oh, Terrence Hibbler. Oh, Hibby. Hey, yes. I like, I like old Terrence. You, you made me think about it, Cole. You're talking about the, the facial oh, yeah. expressions, yeah. the body language and stuff. This kid was, <clears throat> he was, Enjoying himself, himself. Sure He's was. a four-star defensive lineman. I see the one from Holmes County. I do believe he is, and, yes. and Isaiah is from Itawamba. Yeah. Um, that's so uh, Terrence Hippler would certainly be another guy to watch for. Let's see. Now that Auburn, uh, and then of course this weekend, Jay Head. Who's coming in this weekend? Ooh, Jonathan this Bussey. We were talking yes. about him before the show. Yes, Jonathan Bussey, five-star athlete out of the state of Texas, just. Absolutely explosive. Uh, And and when you talk about, yeah, what you talk about what Auburn has needed on offense, it's the ability to make the big play. It's explosion. It's twitch. Terry Bussey. I'm sorry. Terry Bussey. I'm sorry. Um, You know, for a second, you're going to get me saying Gary Busey here in just a minute. Gary (laughs) Busey. (laughs) But Bussey's phenomenal. Uh, You know, he's just a guy that you want to get the ball in his hand and let him make a play. Uh, And, in a vertical shot offense, which is what essentially this is what Philip Montgomery and Hugh Freeze want to do is have an RPO play action vertical shot offense. And they scheme it open better than most. When you put the ball in a kid's hands like that with the, with the kind of explosion that he has in playmaking ability, it can be a house call from any place on the field, man. So would be really great to uh, to see us continue to move up the uh, move up the ranks with him. Make sure that you get inside his top five, get an official visit. But this is just kind of the first visit, I think. Hopefully, which leads to uh, to many, many more. He is the number one athlete in the country, according to On Three. He's visiting Tennessee on Friday, Alabama on Saturday, excuse me, and Auburn on Sunday, according to Sam Spiegelman on Three, who is uh, who knows more about Texas, the state of Texas, recruiting than anybody in this country. Uh, so Terry. It's either Busey or Bussy. I'm whatever, whichever one we choose is going to be wrong. Probably so Jay had saying Bussy because that's how it's spelled, right? And I'm going to go with Busey. And I'm going to say you'll always be my Mackle Dairy. 
who doesn't exist anymore. He doesn't even exist. No, it's, oh, I know it. That was, that's heartbreaking. Oh, isn't uh, it? Mm. What's his name now? Rock Montgomery. That's it, right? Rock Montgomery. That's his name. I, I, I've never heard of that guy. I never will. Yeah, I don't know who that is. <laughs> Rock Montgomery. <laughs> nah, you always be more Michael Um go. We we hinted at or not hinted at it. We touched on a little bit, but also Saturday before the A Day game uh, started, the festivities really started. Auburn basketball picked up a huge commitment in Denver Jones, the shooting guard from FIU. He left his official visit. I think I don't even know if he left it before he committed. And I think 24 hours later, he was signed. Huge pickup, Jay Head, uh, Denver Jones. Really big. Uh, so here's the thing. Look, we have not shot it phenomenally as a team. You have not had – for Bruce Pearl's offense to work as it did back in 2019, 2018, when it's running at a high clip, you need shooters, you need spacers in this offense. Denver Jones can do that. You can play him in ball screen action. You can play him in pick and roll action. He can also get to the get to the rim at a pretty efficient clip as well. He's a scorer, guys. But more than anything, he is a high percentage three point shooter. I think he was over thirty seven percent this past year. And the people that I've talked to about him, if he's not used in ball screen action as much as kind of a handler or a facilitator, if he's out, if he's allowed to be kind of the spot up guy, they think he can shoot it at plus forty percent. Mm. That's how good they think this kid's natural stroke he is. So just a piece that we haven't had since Bryce Brown. I mean, look, Samir Dowdy was fantastic, but he couldn't shoot it at that high of a clip. Having this kind of kid in your team, on your team, and specifically in Bruce Pearl's flex bone offense, flex, flex offense, flex cut offense, uh, it's just going to do a lot to open up the floor. I'm interested to see kind of what they do next, because obviously there's a lot of space right now on the roster for Auburn to make some, some much-needed transfer portal additions. And, and Jeffrey, I'm sure, will transition to that here shortly. But as far as the one you just picked up, he might be the number one shooting guard in the entire portal. And to me, he's probably your leading scorer going into next year. He can shoot it. <clears throat> Woo! He can shoot it. Yeah. Hey, well, we'll stay with hoops because Auburn's not done in the transfer portal. Had a hoop scoops today at Auburn Live on three. And – Still looking now. They got their two with Denver Jones. You got your one and Aiden Holloway. Looking for a three. Yes. <clears throat> some uh, some names to watch. Matthew Cleveland, the lead scorer from Florida State, entered the transfer portal on Tuesday. Jay Head. Big, six foot seven, 200 plus pound, three wing. Could even play some shooting guard for you. Might even could slot in at the four if you needed to just because of the floor versatility and the positionless style of basketball that Auburn tends to play. But really good score, good feel in the mid-range game, good stroke from behind the line. I think he's hit 35-plus percent from three. So would be a really nice compliment to Denver if you're able to pick him up. And somebody that, you know, would just give you more options on the court. Somebody that – realistically, we didn't have enough efficient scoring last year. We had scores, but not what I would refer to as efficient scores, guys that aren't volume shooters. Now, look, I love Katie Johnson, but he's a volume guy. He needs to get the ball, and he needs to get the ball a lot for him to get the numbers that he's possible capable of getting. These two guys, Denver Jones um, and the young man that you just mentioned, they don't need the, whole, the ball a whole lot. They shoot it at a high enough clip that they can be effective if they're only taking 10 shots a game you're potentially going to be getting double figures out of them from that. Whereas with KD, you know, he's he's going to need 15 shots. You know what I mean? Like it just is what it is. I mean, he might miss his first nine and hit, hit the next six. Exactly. But he needs 15. Right, he needs 15. These are guys that are much more efficient in, in, as far as scoring the basketball is concerned. And I'll be excited to see Matthew Cleveland to see if we can get him on campus. I know mm -hmm. we don't have anything scheduled just yet, but hopefully that will transition here relatively soon. Uh, a couple of more guys, uh, Cario Oquendo, of course, we knew about him. He's a transfer from Georgia. Jalen Hill from Oklahoma, who is uh, who had a really good game against Alabama when Oklahoma beat Alabama earlier in the season. The most surprising name to me was Devin Cambridge from Arizona yeah. State by way of Auburn University. Auburn. Do what now? Devin Cambridge. He played three that, years at Auburn. That Devin of, Cambridge? Yes, Mr. Jumpman. Huh. Played, played three played three years at Auburn. Uh, one, of course, was the COVID year, so it didn't count. But then he transferred to Arizona State to play with his, with his brother. 
who was no longer at Arizona State. In order for him to transfer back to Auburn, he would have to graduate. But that seems like a, a real possibility. And I don't know. I think if you bring him back, I, I don't think you have to bring him back as a starter. Hmm. Like, I don't think your your, your pitch to him is or, or his, his leverage is, you know, if I'm not going to start at that three spot, then I'm going to look elsewhere. Can I contribute significantly at the three spot? Because Auburn's looking for an impact guy at the three. They're looking for a starter. Yes. And I don't know. No, he's still shot. I think he shot almost 50% from the field, about 29% from three. Yes. Uh, but he, a lot of his are high percentage shots. He's a dunk guy. He's a get to the basket, get to the rim. The only thing I, I uh, have problem with Devin is, in, in any slasher for this type, is once you get to the – and I, I was awful at this in high school. I would drive and get fouled and then hit 50% of my free throws. <laughs> and Devin's, I think, like a 60 or 70% free throw shooter. Correct. I think a quindo is probably – if you're going to be looking at pieces that are similar, he's a little bit shorter than Devin. Devin's around 6'6", significantly longer, probably gives you a little bit more in the rebounding game. Whereas Aquindo is more, he's a more explosive athlete, closer to six foot four, but shot it at around 70 to 75% from the charity stripe. And I think he was up over 50% in two point percentage field goals, but that three point percentage shooting was somewhere around 27%. It was not exactly what Bruce would want to see. But that being said, when Aquindo went head up against Auburn, I think he just absolutely scorched us for 20 plus points both times. Uh, really a guy that's streaky, but if he's on and if he's focused and what you don't know about him, because the pieces around him were not great at Georgia. They just right. weren't. What does he do when you plug him into a system like Auburn with the kind of players that you can put around him to complement his skill set? Can you get any more out of him? That's something obviously only Bruce Pearl probably knows and what the young man knows. And that's what you would figure out on an official visit. You'd bring him in, you'd let him work out, you know, you'd let him do all the things that, you know, that you need to do to feel comfortable about where he would be on your team. kind of, And not I don't think they can watch him work out, but I do believe right. he can probably work out with other guys. Yeah. They have probably a live scrimmage or something like that, and they can get feedback from the players that were out there on the court with them. Oquendo is uh, – he released his final four of uh, Auburn, Utah, Oregon, and – Nebraska. There you go. And he could visit the last weekend in April. He is another guy who – um, has some not work to do in the classroom, but you remember you've got to have cer so certain credits in order to transfer, and that's I think kind of what uh, they're waiting to see. He definitely is interested in Auburn. Keep an eye on that last weekend in April, um, and, and it's it's very important <clears throat> that I relay this, and I tried to do that in hoop scoop, but patience, man. This is not something that's ending Saturday, and Auburn's got to fill up its, its roster before Sunday. You know, this is going to go – the NBA draft, people are going to fall out of that, enter the transfer portal, and there's going to be a, this, this third wave, which some think it started last night with Matthew Cleveland. Yes. Um, but so 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 this is just the be very beginning of the third wave of transfer. So what's in there now? The inventory in that transfer portal right now is not what you have to choose from. There are going to be several more high, higher-profile guys, high, guys that think they're good enough for the NBA draft – and then they get word that maybe they're a year away. So they're coming back in. They're entering the transfer portal. As Jay had just typed in, May 11th is the last day for those. So, so you still got almost a month left to enter. So be patient. Days, yeah, 60 days from the conclusion of the season. And people get a little bit – because football is so different, right? They get 45 yeah. days in the fall window to enter the portal and then an additional 15 days after spring. Well, with basketball, they open it up all at one time, and it's a massive 60-day window. And in addition to that, what I will tell you, and I found this out, this happens for football as well. If they're a grad transfer, they don't even have to be in the portal window, period. If they become a grad transfer at any point, they're allowed to transfer. Now, that doesn't help you with the interconference transfer rule, um, but that does help you as far as overall ability to transfer. So say Cole becomes eligible, he becomes a grad transfer, July 1st, technically speaking, he could enter the transfer portal at that point and transfer to the school with his choosing. So watch for that development as well, in addition to the extended portal period. So so Auburn basketball recruiting fans, especially on the corner, man, I, I, man, we've got some fantastic discussion. Our message board right now is a full of fantastic 
depends on how you look at it. Um, but it's got a lot of basketball discussion. We've got a lot of awesome posters when it comes to that. A lot of interested people. And uh, so just because I'm giving you four or five names today doesn't mean that's who Auburn's choosing from to fill out the re- remaining roster spots. Be patient, man. Let's see what happens. There's still, again, almost a month left for these guys to enter the portal um, so not a huge, not freaking out rush, you know, not, a, not, not a freaking out rush to, uh, to, 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 to fill up these remaining spots. Uh, speaking of the transfer portal, football, American football opens Saturday and, uh, Auburn will be in the hunt for several positions. As Hugh Freeze said, if anybody can make our team better, we're, we're interested specifically though couple of positions that everybody's going to be keeping a track on uh, the quarterback. I mean, that's going to run the cycle, right? The news cycle. The quarterback yep. transfer is going to run the Auburn recruiting news cycle through this next is it 15 days. Yes, from May the or April the 15th to May the 1st, or I guess April the 30th, technically speaking, May the 1st would be the first day the portal is no longer open. Jay Head, what some positions you're going to be keeping an eye on for Auburn to seek? I mean, so, we're going to best available, sure, but we got to have these guys right. We got to have somebody here, 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 and here. Absolutely. Uh, so, right now, obviously, quarterback, I think that's first and foremost. And you hit on that as we kind of segue into this portion of the podcast. But wide receiver, we've talked about that a good bit as far as if you can find a guy to upgrade that room. My only concern is I think what I want to kind of temper expectation with there are people that seem to think that we're going to be able to go into the portal and pluck you know, a number one guy, you know what I mean, like multiple number ones. Guys, typically speaking, the guys that are entering the portal, it's littered with guys that I would call number twos, okay? There's not a ton of guys that I think, you know, you obviously you had the guy last year that transferred from um, Pittsburgh to USC who you would take, Jordan Addison, who would technically say he was a number one, a handful of others, but not a lot of guys I think they're going to go out and get you a thousand plus yards, but that's not necessarily what the staff is looking for. You're looking for layer depth in that room that's going to be able to give you more production than what you get right now. And if you can find another outside wide receiver to complement Camden Brown, I think that's what exactly what they'd like to do. Coy Moore is fantastic, I think, in the slot. I think he features better there. And obviously, Javarius Johnson is great in the slot. But if you could find one to two more receivers that can be productive, specifically on the outside, I think that's what the staff would like to find. Beyond that, a pass rusher, if you can get one, you know, you just don't know. Pass rusher like wide receiver ones, there's just – most of those guys, you got to get them out of the high school ranks and you got to develop them because, typically speaking, your premium positions, guys pay up on NIL and they lock those kids in. They don't mm-hmm. let them get into the portal, not the good ones anyway. So you're going to have to be careful there, but I think we'll look for a pass rusher. And I think potentially some depth at cornerback. I think that was a little mm. concern for this staff. They've got two young men coming in, both guys that me and Cole are high on. I didn't think a lot of, but maybe they'll be ready to play right away. Maybe they won't. You know, the further away from the ball you typically play, the quicker you seem to be able to transition to the college game. Yeah. But that being said, do you really want to play three freshmen? You're already going to be counting on one freshman. Do you want – if you have a couple of injuries, do you want to be counting on three guys to be out there on the field at the same time? My guess is potentially not. So I think defensive back is another place you could look that they might look to add someone – and then maybe offensive line. I think interior offensive line, maybe even a tackle if the right guy were to pop in, they'd definitely be interested there. So those are some positions for me. But, Cole, how do you see it? Uh, I agree with all those. Uh, I mean, I could see – I don't think they will, personally. I don't think Auburn's going to get – what I'm saying is I don't think they're going to get 10 to 15 guys in the second window. Right. But I could mm. see it. I could see it happening if they had to. You know what I mean? If if the ten guys presented themselves and wanted to be in, I think they'd take them. I think they wouldn't think about it. But I think interior offensive line is a place that I'm interested to see. I think they'll find somebody there. Mm-hmm. The reason I say that, and the reason they may go for that, is because you got Tate Johnson, and, and you know I've been up there every day talking to coaches, talking to players. The, the reports on him are good. They really like him. You know, I've seen tape of him. He never uh, overly wowed me, I guess, as a center mm-hmm. for Auburn before he got hurt. Not bad, not bad, but you know what I mean. Uh, but but the reviews have been good. Uh, he looks like he's reshaped his body a little bit, coming back pretty strong from this injury. I think they like him. 
But once again, he's a guy that's injury prone. Okay. Jeremiah Wright, also injury prone. He's had a couple injuries and they love Jeremiah Wright. Don't get me wrong. I, I think if they have it their way, Tate Johnson and Jeremiah Wright start all year, but they got to have somebody just in case. And I don't know if they fully trust Cam Stutz. I don't know if they fully trust some of these other guys. I, I may be wrong. I'm just, you know, spitballing here. I think they need to get an interior offensive lineman, a guard, to be more specific. Right. So, right. That leads us to the Connor Lou discussion. You know, who's he's fantastic. But once again, yeah. do you want to lean on a freshman in that way if you don't have to? I, I think I, I'm with you, Cole. You know, look, the, the reviews on Tate have been great, but injury, he got injured last year and then he got injured again in spring. Yeah. Jeremiah Wright got injured last year. He really wasn't it, even full speed all spring. It, right. It's just not, it's not a knock. It's not even a knock on Cam Stutz. And I, I the guy played last year and was okay. I think I think you would be okay with Cam Stutz, but you want to have another option, right? Yes. Do you do you really have another option besides Cam Stutz? I'm not so sure. Connor Lou, yes, we know he's going to be good. Is he ready for that action? Hard to say. Hmm. Maybe he's ready by the end of the year, but can you can you bank on that? So I think they need another interior offensive lineman. I think they need another corner. And, and from talking to Ron Roberts, boy, he was pretty adamant about gosh we don't have any corners i mean we got these guys coming in but we are very low on numbers he said now the guys i got they can play but i gotta have somebody else Mm -hmm. gotta have somebody so i i really believe that corners are going to be a a heavy heavily looked at position in the in the uh portal uh and i'm talking true corner i'm not talking about a guy that might can play nickel and could i'm i mean a coverage guy that can play corner out on an island Okay, That's what they're looking for, I think, and then quarterback and and Jack edge rusher. I think those are the other two most important. I um uh, so so basically on the offense, everybody every position except the running back and a tight end. Uh, those are the two positions on offense that we really haven't heard of. Hugh Freeze mentioned interior offensive line. We know the quarterback, uh, interior offensive line, wide receiver. He mentioned that too back in February. Uh, offensive tackle, you don't ever turn down one of those, right? No. I don't think they're going to – I don't think they're freaking out for for one. But if something comes across, they're certainly not going to turn down offensive tackle. On the defense, uh, defense, interior defensive line is really the only thing we haven't heard much buzz about. I know, Cole, you love some Nasili Healy Kite. I know that's <laughs> not his name, but <laughs> – I it? do, man. That guy's a – that guy's going to be good. I can just tell you. I, I don't – I don't like to just put myself out there and say, oh, he's going to be great. But sometimes I just – I get that feeling, man. And, and with him, I got it. I you like what it. you see. Sure do. Uh, yeah. And it, me and you are the same, on the same page, 100%, Cole. I loved what you saw from him. When you saw him play that three-tech slash four-eye, he was the guy, like you said, with violent hands that caused a little bit mm. of disruption. I felt like they were almost too big when they had Jason Jones. Yeah, yeah. And Justin Rogers in the game at the same time. I felt like they played a little bit better when Rogers was over the nose. You had Nasili Kite at the three slash four, and then you had my main man from Montgomery, Alabama, out there at that five tech defensive end. I think that's probably your starting unit, and then you got a nice group layered back behind that. I, I will say this though, and we haven't really pointed this out yet, but I know we're all thinking it. Who's Auburn going to lose in the portal? I mean, I'm just playing that. I'm just playing the averages here. I don't, I don't know who they're going to lose. I don't know if they're going to lose anybody. The aver- the law of averages says they're going to lose somebody, and it's possible they lose somebody that's uh, maybe looking at being a contributor. Well, and, uh, and Jaden segue us in here, but to for us to make the pickups we want to make, you're going to have to lose somebody because I think sure. I believe we're at 83 scholarship guys right now, Ooh. counting the 12 enrollees that we'll have. Yeah, from June. Okay, so knowing that, Jay Head, I thought you made a good point before the show, but just from a numbers perspective, some of these rooms, some of these position groups, which do you think is most likely to lose somebody? Because of the the numbers at each position, if you look at the defensive line, that's one you look at automatically. You brought in three transfers this past cycle. You also added Keldrick Falk. Um, you added Stephen Stephen Johnson, and then you added Wilkie Denod. 
okay, to what was already, I think, a six deep room. Now you're also bringing in two more enrollees on top of that in the uh, the young man from junior college, Bobby, oh, yeah. Bobby Travis. Travis. Mm. And then also probably your most – Go ahead and say it. Go ahead and say it. (laughs) The guy that could be the most disruptive of everybody, you know, from 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 Nebraska. Yeah, (laughs) yeah, yeah, yeah. From Nebraska, (laughs) Georgia. Oh, 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 oh! I thought you were going to get to Justin Rogers. Oh no, 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 no! no. You talking about Deron Reed? (laughs) Yes, sir. Oh yeah, yeah. Deron Reed. Reed. Bringing in two more guys, so I think defensive line is a place you could potentially lose two guys you know, one to two just because of the numbers. I mean, you start to think about guys, it's make or break time for some of these guys. Some of these guys, who's the the young man from Kansas that um, that Rodney signed? It's a bet you Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's Cole. still on the team? He's still on the team. Yeah. And, you know, right. The face you just made, Jay Lee, is kind of what I think. Like, okay, is, is he ready? Is another guy like um, Jeffrey Emba, is he frustrated at his position with where he is on the depth chart? Post spring, I don't think he was anticipating having a guy like um, who's the young man I'm thinking of from Montgomery, Marcus, Marcus Harris. Marcus yeah, Harris was, playing that five tech spot. I think Jeffrey kind of thought, okay, I'm going to be out here by myself. Well, that's not necessarily the case. So if he thinks he needs to be a starter, maybe he's going someplace else. You know, so that's a room to me where there could be some trans some transition. The wide receiver room, you've got a lot of numbers. Mm. You know, Hugh Freeze wants to bring in even more. Safe yes. guys too. Safety. I'm watching safety. safety. Yes, big time at safety. We saw tons of guys because because Justin Hokinson and I got together and and we were trying to figure out what a projected depth chart might look like. You know, post spring and uh, I, I used the A day game. Uh, of course, we got to see practice, but I used the A day game a good bit just to see where everybody's sort of lined up in a game situation. And they were rolling safeties in and out. And they were missing Keontae Scott, who's a nickel, of course, and Donovan Kaufman, who can sort of do both. So I know they got a ton of numbers there, believe it or not. Does a guy like Marquise Gilbert, you know, he had a nice little showing in the 8 day game. Maybe he he has some good tape from practice, puts that out there. Uh, I don't know if Craig McDonald can transfer. since He came in from uh, Iowa State last year. But mm-hmm. – you know, there's just a couple of guys in that room I'm watching personally. And and Zach makes a good point about Dylan Brooks. You know, we know Auburn's going to look for a pass rusher, an edge guy. Right. You get frustrated with that because he's maybe behind Keltrick Falk right now and goes, oh, I'm done with this. I don't care about the numbers. I'm done. Right. You know? they, I mean, like, I, I'm ready to play someplace. And so you never know. And, Cole, back to your safety point, we're bringing in three guys that are all capable of playing safety, you know, in T. Yeah. Love, Sylvester Smith. And then who's the young man from Texas? CJ. Johnson. CJ yeah, Johnson. CJ yeah. Johnson. Those are all guys that are capable of playing safety. So Dam's got a break somewhere. And then obviously the quarterback room. We're looking to see if there's Damn any right. transition in there. <laughs> so, you know what I mean? Uh, does, does CJ Finley decide, you know, that he's ready to play somewhere else? Does Holden Gurner decide he wants to look elsewhere because Auburn decides to bring in? Another correct, me, uh, correct me if I'm wrong here, but really and truly the guy that can't transfer is Robbie right unless he were to go down a level if he were to go to the FCS I do believe he could transfer if that's what he chose to do well he'd tear it up down there wouldn't he oh I would think so put him in what a rich Rodriguez offense at Jacksonville State and watch him go look I I have my qualms you know with with some of the things he does in 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 games and I've said that and but he's no Kyle Frazier (laughs) he's pretty good he could be a pretty good quarterback on you know I think I think he could be a good skill player. Um, I don't know what he thinks about that, but there it is. Uh, let's see. The only position we didn't name, and I think Hugh uh, mentioned this back in our Inside the 20 interview in February, but he said another linebacker. Now, I'm not convinced he didn't mean an outside linebacker, like yeah. an edge, but he did say linebacker with Auburn running two. What's the depth look like there uh, post spring? Okay. Decent, uh, you know, we don't know. We're, quantity looks good. Mm-hmm. We don't know what they how they feel about quality. Of course, give me give me four or five names: uh, Wesley Steiner, Cam Riley, uh, Demario Tolan, Austin Keys, and uh, the, the young man from Mobile, uh, yep. Woodyard. 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 
So you're Asante, fine. I've I've heard a few good things about Asante. He's still in there. So so there's there's a three deep at, at each spot at the two inside backer spots. Pretty much. And now you don't know what you've got. There's the potential that T Love could move to linebacker. Oh, yeah. We've discussed that because he's a little bit of an oversized safety. Does he grow into a linebacker? And then what happens with Powell Gordon? Do they move him outside to the edge rusher position? Or do have they- y'all heard anything about him? A little. I have. So yeah, Ron Roberts specifically. We, I think somebody in the media media sort of asked him straight up, is Powell Gordon. You know, is he a guy that you're still working in at inside backer, or is he a guy that you know because of numbers? Maybe he played edge in high school. Could he sure. do that here? And he goes, you know, we've talked about that. He said he's playing inside right now, but we sure have talked about that. So. Maybe that's a move you see, and, and I think they like Powell. I really do. I, I've gotten good vibes from talking to coaches. They they seem to – they love his effort. I mean, there's no doubt they love that. They love his work ethic. He's always in the weight room. He does everything they ask. You know, I think there may be – if there's a concern about him moving to edge, it might be his length you know, for the college level. But, gosh, just turn on his tape from high school, man. He was – he has some really good – good as an edge rusher. In the highest classification, right? It is. Well, look, I went to the game. Uh, I was at the game. I was standing in the end zone against when Auburn High School played IMG Academy. Okay, it doesn't get much better than that. Right. He he lines up across from Tyler Booker, who is now an offensive lineman at Alabama. Starting left right. tackle is going to be this year, right? I'm pretty sure. Uh, left tackle or guard or something. He's in there. He's in the mix. So, Powell Gordon lines up on the edge. Tyler Booker, I'm like, all right, let's see what you got, Powell, you know. Gives him the gives him the rip, gets through it, strips it from the quarterback. Auburn football going that way in the red zone. Next play, Powell lines up at tight end, fade to the end zone, catches it, falling down, touchdown. Damn. Powell Gordon. And I said, I was standing there with Chad Simmons actually. Chad Simmons on three's director of recruiting. He goes, he's a gamer, isn't he? <laughs> I said, yeah, man, he is. He's a gamer. He's a gamer. <laughs> so, so does he have? The frame that Bart Eddins had? No, I'm sorry, Brett Eddins had. No, I, I, I think wish he did. You know, I played Brett in high school. Yeah, I'm going to date myself here when he was at <laughs> Trinity Presbyterian. Yeah. yeah. Um, in fact, my yearbook quote came from that game because I was a featured wide receiver that was supposed to crack down on Brett. Brett played outside linebacker. Thanks, and I, all, Of all of 165 pounds of me came down – to crack on Brett Eddins, and he hit me so hard in my chest that I flew and landed on the <laughs> sideline. And my offensive coordinator looked at me and said, great job, Head. You missed the block, but you look real pretty. <laughs> I can see uh, Jay Head at the pep rally. Uh, Brett Eddins is going down. He's going down. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I definitely flew on and levitated over to the sideline. But I was a little bit smaller. Uh, okay. On their hips. He's more 6'2", 6'3", whereas Brett was 6'4", 6'5". Brett was yeah, a big old dude, and he could Brett move. Had the, yeah, Brett had the frame to hold 265. I don't think Powell could play effectively over 245, 250. I agree. I think that's about the, the front the weight he could get at and maintain his quickness and his twitch, and that's what makes him elite is effort and twitch, and you see it when he gets off the line of scrimmage. Um. If they can get him into the 240 pound range, I think you got something off the edge. I really do. The question is, can you? How quickly can you get him there? Look, yeah. I, I don't. That's just where I always envision Powell. I envision him coming off the edge. Mm-hmm. Um, so to see him lined up at uh, inside backer, I'd like to see him. I mean, like, what do I know, right? But he was it's, really good off the edge in high school. That's what I know. Was, he was. It's the skill set, right? And this is why, you know, I've critiqued Sterling Dixon so so much that line of scrimmage players is a different skill set as a line of scrimmage player than it is to reading the triangle and playing in the box as a box linebacker. Yeah, It's learning to play off guards, learning to play downhill in, in a certain capacity, um, trading off blocks, it's scraping, you know, making sure that you're, you know, spilling things back inside. All the things that go into playing – an inside linebacker position. I think Sterling Dixon is probably more suited to that than Powell Gordon, even Powell Gordon is. But Powell was so coachable. I think they just thought, look, we got to take this kid and we'll fit him in wherever we can. But I'm with you, Jay Lee. That vertical pass rush that he's got, the quickness, the speed off the edge, I just – God, man, if you can get his body right, I would love to see him on the outside because I think he would just be one of those guys. 
you would probably, if you're the offensive tech, you're like, all right, whatever, I've got mm-hmm. this. And then the next thing you know, he's by you for two straight sacks. That's right. Swing and a miss. Mm-hmm. Same, it's the same. It's the same kind of uh, sensation with Mosiah Nasili Kite because the guy's not, you know, he doesn't have the NFL measurables, as we like to say. Right. But it doesn't matter. It, 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 it doesn't take somebody that knows football that well to go to watch the A-Day game and see, gosh, 33 is coming off faster than everybody. He's in everybody's chest before anybody gets out of their stance. I mean, that was a good observation. Powell Gordon's similar, okay, in that regard. He's just kind of, he just surprises you a little bit when he when he bursts out of his stance. Yes. Uh, so we're thinking maybe around seven. I would speculate five to seven, something that's like exactly that. what I wrote down. Yeah, that sounds right. I, I like I said I could go as far as ten, but I don't know if that's possible. So maybe it depends on who all leaves. Yeah, can you clear that much space? That's what you don't know. Yeah. Like I, I think they would love to take. If I'm being honest, and, and I'm not, this is not a shot at any one player, but I think they would love to bring in as many of their own guys as they possibly can. Guys yeah. that fit the skills oh, yeah. that they yeah. want at each position. Now, they're going to do what they can to build this team around the strengths of each and every room and try to bring them together as a cohesive unit. But, damn, if they wouldn't love to add guys that could do the things that they really want to do on offense or defense, for that matter. Jay head when you said the 83, did you account for uh, Desmond Tizzle and Cam Brown there too? I did. I accounted for them okay. being gone. Gotcha. Cameron Brown. Yes. Cameron. Yes. Yeah, we we got to make sure we said because Cam is going to be throwing the damn ball. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Cam Den. Not Cam um, Well, we're, we're, we're going to be doing it all at Auburn Live on three. The portal open Saturday. Basketball portal is already open. Um, Recruiting is going to be full swing. Man, we've had some really good posts this week, folks. Y'all got some how about you's? Yeah. Well, you don't have you don't have any now. No, I don't have any. I was gonna toss Zach McKinnell and then you know he put it in the comments. He can't. I had I had my uh my, my view. Let's see here. Oh, okay, okay, okay. All right, I hear you. Cameron Brown, younger brother of Derek Brown, is in the portal. Yes. Has has declared his intentions to the portal. We don't know where yet. But – uh, and who was the other one, Cole? Desmond Tisdall. Oh, yeah. Oh, Des. He's gone. OT wheel linebacker there. Mm-hmm. Um, how about you, Cole? Yes. I'm going to go with one this week, and it is going to phone. Okay. Yep. Okay. All yeah. right. I, I'm okay with that. I got yeah, a lot. I like all okay. phone. I'm going to give it – because I got on him on the board earlier today, I'm going to give old Mace him due. Oh, God. Oh. <laughs> ah, I knew you were going to say that before you even said it. Listen, Mace him due is the smartest poster about he's, basketball he's good. In, in the world. If you don't believe me, just ask him. Hey, he'll tell you that. <laughs> I love it, dude. Listen, anybody that gets on the message board and tells Bruce Pearl what he needs to do, Yes. Hey, respect, big dog. Yeah, you know what I mean? But, you know, I I was making a little fun of him because of his reaction to, to Kerry Oquindo. I mean, he, he, he I think I he saw it. basically a uh, – Meltdown, man. Yeah. He was triggered. Yes. He has an asthma attack every time that thing <laughs> comes up. But, Mace, it's going to be all right, brother. I still love you anyway. That's what that's what we're giving you. How about you? He was one of the many uh, – listen, basketball recruiting – there's re- there are reasons that those threads are so popular right now. It's because people care, and nobody cares more than uh, Mace Hemdu. Again, hey, if you don't hey, believe me, just ask him. I got one more. All right, cool. This one's in honor of Keith for his favorite poster in Auburn message board history. Ooh, I know who it is. His favorite, his absolute favorite, that'd be Rice. Oh. Mm-hmm. He did love him some rice, didn't he? Rice was disappointed today. He's like, how am I ever going to get a how about you again with (laughs) Keith not being here? I I got you, man. I got you. We are taking over the rice how about you. I will start mine off with a big how about you to Keith Niebuhr, man. Yes. Uh, We we, we talked about him. He's had enough ego boosting from us already, so we'll just (laughs) leave it at that. How about you to Keith? Listen, (laughs) nobody gave a better how about you than Keith, did he? He'd be like, oh, yeah. How about you, now? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I wish I could go look, back and find all the high batches he had. Like, 
Jeffrey, the we wor- rubbed off on him a little bit, I think. I think we did. He was – how about you, everybody? Yeah, he had been accent by the time he left. He, he, him and Brian Kelly, you know what I mean? Yeah. I oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Hey, I got some how about you. I got how about you to astrophobia? How about you to trope them? T-R-0-P-M. Oh, yeah. I don't know if that's trope them or not, but how about you to – J.R. Sapp. From Twitter, man, he messaged me. He was looking for inside the 20. And obviously, with Keith gone, with this being uh, kind of the offseason, we're going to dial it back on inside the 20s. We'll kick that back up later in the year. Uh, but uh, program, programming announcement there for any of you guys looking for inside the 20. We'll do the recruiting show typically on Thursdays. Uh, we moved it up a day. We had some uh, scheduling conflicts, so we moved it up today this week. But uh, typically, we will have recruiting show Thursday evenings. And the call-in show on Sundays at 6.30. Uh, but J.R. Sapp was a big fan of the show. We appreciate him. Big how about you to him. How about you to All Tiger 85? All Tiger 85. How about you to BBP? Uh, how about you to Osman 12? How about you to Duluth Tiger? How about you to Dust? Who, when I posted on the board today that Auburn was looking at uh, Chance Nolan. Not, I mean, you know, they had contacted him. The court, uh, transfer quarterback from Oregon State. Dust said, Got to admit, man, this kind of feels like a quarterback Harson would contact. <laughs> I listen. I just thought that was funny. I don't know that there's any merit to it, but I thought it was funny. Uh, how about you, the NC Tiger two three four? How about you, the Barnes Hard, who uh, who might be taking me on my first turkey hunt? Oh, ooh, might be. I know Mike's grows on chickens' ass, but we'll see what happens. Mm. Uh, and my fi- and finally, uh, how about you to all the meats for free? I don't think that right. name, dude. I think <laughs> it's Althea Met Fee. All the meats. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. I don't know how to say his name. I'm I'm curious. He needs to call he's in. Ha- he, he's gonna have to call in Sunday night. I, I wrote down all the meat for free, but hey, any of this Althea all- Met Fee. Althea Met. Fee is what I say in my head, I think. Okay. <laughs> J-Head, any, any idea? No. Alt? <laughs> Thank you for your contribution, J-Head. Heem <laughs> et fee. You like that. <laughs> he's going he to have to pronounce that for us. Until then, he's all the meat for free. I don't know. Hey, you know you don't want me in the enunciation game <laughs> at all. You don't even need to go down that rabbit hole. Oh. Hey, listen, next week, we're hoping to have some names out of the transfer portal. We're hoping to know who's leaving uh, we're hoping to know who uh, Auburn has contacted, maybe even some visits being set up. So it's going to be quick. December was kind of drawn out. It's going to be quick. You got 15 days to get in, and I would imagine things are going to take off quickly. And uh, quarterbacks, we've heard some names. Maybe by next week, and I'm, I'm guessing we've, we've got some names that aren't in the portal yet. I don't like to m- mention those names until they're in the portal because it gets back to the kids and now they're having to put up with all that stuff. I don't think it's fair to the kids. Um, young men, they're not really kids, but uh, Chance Nolan uh, was a guy who entered the portal in December. He's been in contact with Auburn, and uh, we'll see if anything uh, comes of that. But next week we'll certainly have more names. Hey, and if, uh, if you want to follow along daily, go to Auburn Live on 3. Join us, man. Uh, you will not regret it. I think that's it, folks. We're going to be back Sunday night at 6.30 with the call-in show. And uh, we, we, we really do appreciate everybody. I mean, we appreciate everybody listening. We appreciate everybody watching. And uh, for Colton, for J-Head, for Zach in the back, I'm Jeffrey Lee, man. Y'all stay out of that left lane. See ya. <laughs>